Hi, I'm Shufian of MalaysiaKini.tv. This is a user's impression of Canon's new compact professional video camera, the XF100. There are two variants of this camera. This one that we have is the XF100, and the other is the XF105. They are completely identical cameras. The only difference is that the XF105 have got the Genlock timecode and HD SDI ports that will be positioned here. Obviously, the XF105 will be the more expensive of the two cameras. On the outside of the camera, we have the lens, which is a Canon 10 times zoom lens with a ring which is switchable for focus, zoom, or iris and ND filters. There is also a customizable dial that you can see here and you can set the function of this dial in the menu. Over here, you have the autofocus or manual focus buttons. The XF100 and 105 boast of a 3.5 inch LCD and when you flip open the LCD, you'll see the two CF card slots. The playback buttons and various other buttons. Just below that, you have buttons to select whether you want to shoot on full auto or on manual. And you have the white balance and the white balance set. Just below, you have the iris, gain and shutter buttons. At the back of the camera is the battery compartment over here and the power save buttons, the power image stabilizer buttons, the zebra buttons and the waveform buttons. Amazingly, a camera of this size can boast of waveform monitor. On top here is the camera off and on buttons and a media button. Around the other side is a record button and a slot for the SD HD card where you can store the settings for this camera and then transfer it to a second camera. Interestingly, this camera of this size has got two XLR inputs. This camera shoots at really professional bit rates. Its highest quality is shooting at 5 megabits per second at 4 to 2 color space at 1920 by 1080, 60i, 30p, and 24p. Or you can set it to shoot for 1280 by 720 at 60, 30, and 24p. The imaging unit is a single CMOS 1 third inch sensor. I was initially a bit worried about shooting with a single CMOS chip. Um, after being used to shooting with three CCDs or three CMOS chips. But I have to say I've been greatly impressed by the quality of this camera. I've been using it for about five weeks and I have to say that it's a great camera for the video journalist. It is very compact, very light, weighing just 2.7 pounds with everything in, including the battery. This is not a technical review because you can get all the technical details from the website. And there are lots of discussions on this camera in forums like DV Infonet. But what I have to say is that shooting news for Michigani with this camera has been great for my back, shoulders, arms, and wrists. I've also been shooting pretty much on auto exposure, and that's been great. So as a run and gun camera, it's immensely useful for the manual enthusiast. This camera has pretty much all the manual controls that you would want. One quality I find immensely useful for this camera is an infrared switch, which you can switch here, so you can sh uh, shoot in virtual darkness. I'm also quite happy with the fact that you can put a strap around this camera. And um, it has this strap, although you can say maybe for a small camera like this, you don't need a strap, but for a solo journalist, video journalist, this strap is immensely useful. Its competitor does not have a strap. The 
only beef I have with this camera so far is the power button. The placement and design isn't quite useful because it's a bit difficult to press the button to switch on the camera. But one redeeming feature is that it's got a battery that can last quite long and it has a power save button. So you could switch it on, hit the power save button and if you're on standby for quite long periods. So this is the user's review of an excellent camera, the Canon XF100. The baby brother to the larger XF300 and 305. Thank you for watching Rashikini.tv. Thank <laughs> you.